I watched Leo the other day and it was pretty unexpected. So before we dive into this review, a uh, quick disclaimer, I am aware that Kathy and Vikram are part of the Lakesh cinematic universe and I, I did get recommended to watch those before watching Leo. However, I am guilty of not watching it. And my rationale is I wanted to watch Leo with fresh eyes. I wanted to see how it stood on its own. It's kind of like watching um, Pathan or watching War without knowing what the spy cinematic universe is. So I was hoping to go in and explore Leo without those preconceived notions. Yeah, it did affect my ability to understand references and affected the hype of cameos. But I think I got out of it what I wanted for this review. Hopefully you guys can forgive me for that. So this is not a small movie. This film, VJ's Leo film, registered a great opening and joined RR and Jawan in the list of highest opening Indian films worldwide. It follows a coffee shop owner who has to protect his family from a drug dealer claiming that he used to be a gangster. Now we are going to head into spoilers territory here, but eventually some pretty bad gangsters find his face and realize he is the splitting image of the son of an infamous gangster. In the first half, it's it's kind of slow. It's a slow burn. We get a deep dive into the family. And I love that we got to know the family members. This was something I wished Jayla had more of. And as a result, because we got to know the family members, we felt the impact of the events that followed. And we get to see how these events tears the family apart. We get to see VJ wrestle with the guilt and him trying to hold everything together. And this part was really engaging and I loved it. But as the movie progressed into the second half, and this is something I noticed a lot of reviews and a lot of commenters saying, the story kind of unravels a bit towards then and instead just becomes this action thriller bonanza. Because in the second half, the story kind of shifts away from the family aspect and more towards this one question. Is VJ actually Leo? And this question keeps coming up to the point where it almost got a little bit repetitive because we all know who VJ is. So on to VJ, his performance, without a doubt, a highlight of Leo. Uh, we get to see these different portrayals of him and he is he's very intense, he's very charismatic and he's so charming. The way he portrays his character is brilliant. So in the beginning of the movie, it was set up, VJ's character didn't want to kill because the moment you kill someone even if it's for the greater good even if you have no choice you become a murderer and that is a sin and this is really powerful because later on you see when he is thrust into that situation that hypothetical is giving his son you see what choice he makes and despite making the unwinnable decision to defend his daughter and staff member we watch as the guilt just eats away at VJ. He's so good at showing how much the crime he committed weighs on him. Especially during the scene where he is forced to show his shooting skills. And as he's shooting the targets, uh, flashbacks between him and the scene where he kills the criminals, when he kills the murderers. It was really powerful because you really got to see him suffering PTSD. The whole ending of this movie kind of devalued this amazing moment for me when you realize, was it all just an act? So yes, we see VJ's character transform into Leo. And at first I thought the movie was trying to show the consequences of being violent and the consequences of trying to escape or abandon your past life but instead it sort of celebrated the violence it still celebrated yes leo is back when we see him reveal that it was leo all, the, all along um we see that crazy maniac we see that that gangster murderer reveal himself 
and it just made me go, oh, that's so cool, that's so hype, I love, you know, how his body language changes. But the more I've thought about it, and the more I wrote this review, I, I went, what about the first half? What about all that stuff from the first half? I think in his performance, you can really tell that he got to knew the character he was playing. There was a lot of nuances, the way he moves, the way he acts with his family, the way he handles situation, and the way he breaks and becomes overwhelmed by everything that's happened to him. And as a result, he's able to create these really tense emotional scenes. But someone that I want to give credit to is the crazy serial killer. He, he was, I couldn't find his name, I couldn't find him, but he was really convincing as a crazy killer. Like I really got the sense that this guy was just unpredictable, cannot be controlled, and it's just evil. The music of this movie was amazing. Um, and he really, like, he, his ability to create music is brilliant. It shines in this movie. Like, any time something is happening, the background sound, the background music just enhances that scene. The musical sequence, that experience was very memorable. The dance scene was very fun. I loved Nareddy. Cinematography, adrenaline pumping, very fast paced. Again, engaged, it never felt boring. Personal favorite of mine was the factory scene where the camera is just zooming to different parts of the factory. It was very well shot. I think it was one shot as well. So very hard to pull off, but they did. Where the movie sort of lost people, was towards the second half. Now, the second half had a lot of action scenes, amazing action scenes, and a lot of hype moments, don't get me wrong. And I love those, I really do, but it just sort of suffered in terms of writing. Like, for example, a character gets introduced, a key character, the twin sister, and we don't really get to know her. She just gets introduced and gets killed off later but this is such a key character to the whole film and to Leo's character and I was just like what they just she just died I wish the movie just gave us a little bit of time to register what has happened to get to know the character to connect to them and then we get to see you know the subsequent events and, th and the second thing at least to me that was sort of obvious when I was watching the movie was how it was trying to connect to the Lakesh cinematic universe. And I guess this is because I didn't watch Vikram or Kathy. But because I didn't watch him and because I wasn't getting the references, I instead noticed how those random cameos or those random references felt forced. It wasn't organic. Like it a like character just shows up, smiles, and it's like the whole movie stopped to show that instead of it being part of the movie. I reckon if they were able to just keep Leo as his own standalone movie and not worry about that cinematic universe connection, it would have been stronger for it. But I get it. It's because I didn't watch the other movies. So that's why it didn't affect me. But that's my perspective. So then, final thoughts. Leo is a great movie. I liked it. I had a lot of fun. I was very entertained. It is a great movie with very strong performances, great direction, and a very powerful musical score. It was only let down, in my opinion, because of the forced connections to its cinematic universe, and also because of the second half, which focused a lot on the action scenes. And as a result, took away from the first half, which set a lot of dramatic points up. Despite the shortcomings I've just mentioned, it is very much an engaging cinematic experience. Especially if you love action movies, you love drama, and you love VJ. So if you ask me, hey Darren, should I watch Leo? Yeah, you should. It's a good movie. VJ is Leo. Rest in peace. 
Uh, so thanks for joining me, guys. Feel free to share your thoughts and comments about this movie. What did you think? What was your review of it? Did you share similar thoughts to me? Or am I just talking out of my butt? <laughs> Who knows? Take care. See you in the next one.